This is Bruce Edwin with Hollywood Sentinel, and I'm speaking here today with Carol M. Christian Levy, and I have the pleasure to be here in Carol's studio and have Carol here with me. Carol, how are you today? I'm well today. Thanks, Bruce. Excellent. It's great seeing you as always, and I'm real excited to have the pleasure to do this interview with you. You've um, already um, done a bit of interview with me textually, and I was really, um, really impressed with basically that process of what I've read that the mindset of where you come from and it, it fascinates me so it's a real pleasure to uh, speak with you here live thanks I mean I'm gonna enjoy this too as well excellent now have you done many interviews with the press and media before Carol I haven't done that many before no this is um, one of the first video interviews um, of my painting career okay excellent well you have a quite an impressive background and career. For those that are new to your work, can you please kind of give us a um, brief background on you and your training and where you began? I, um, I have a typical checkered background of an artist in that I've had many different experiences with mediums and um, career paths that all seem to gravitate around the visual arts and I started of course um, training in school as a visual artist back in the Midwest I went to the University of Iowa the University of Nebraska I taught um, fine art to high school students and hmm. came out to California to begin um, work as an antiquities conservator with the Getty Museum and wow. um, that was an internship, and I think I learned a great deal about myself and how important the studio environment is to me. And it took my career towards more education. I just uh, retired from teaching at the University of Southern California, where I taught public art. Wow. And I <laughs> am fortunate enough to have um, studio practice for 25 or 30 years now, and it culminates in this studio that I have now in Chinatown, where I do both printmaking and painting. Excellent. Now, that was a lot of information, and I appreciate it, and I'm saying it's a lot because there are some, wow, those were some heavy uh, credentials and backgrounds. Now, I want to, to the points, uh, for those that are not familiar with the Getty, um, can you give kind of a, a quick lowdown on the Getty here in Los Angeles? A quick lowdown would be the, <laughs> the Getty that I knew a, was um, a small museum in uh, hmm. the villa in mm -hmm. Malibu. And this was in the 70s, so it was before the Getty Trust. Mm came into being and before they built the, um, the Getty Center, which is now in the center of Los Angeles. Interesting. And um, the focus of the Malibu Museum, villa, if you will, was um, on Greek and Roman antiquities. Hmm. So their painting collection was um, medium-sized and most of us who were interning in conservation of antiquities worked on labs and worked on vases and sculptures that the J. Paul Getty had brought from Greece and Italy. Interesting. And then your next major position after that, um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, you said was at teaching at USC, is that right? In Academically, yes. Okay. However, in between the uh, Museum Conservation of Antiquities mm -hmm. internship that I did at the Getty, um, I decided that it was a little too quiet for me hmm. to work in the Museum Conservation Labs, and that <laughs> I really wanted to be um, involved with people and a dialogue in my art. Sure. So I actually uh, spent a decade as a creative director at uh, Lakeshore Curriculum Materials, which is a, hmm. basically a toy company for schools. 
Wow. And um, I worked my way up the commercial um, art ranks from layout artist all the way up to a creative director with them. Hmm. And it was a fascinating experience to be able to draw every day and work with photographers and models and products and develop product and do graphic design and topography. Hmm. All the skill sets that I needed to be a commercial artist that I didn't learn at the university. Fascinating. I mean, your, your background in education and art is so vast. It really is impressive. Um, and uh, hearing how the Getty has changed, that's interesting as well. When you mentioned um, that it was too quiet for you or mm -hmm. you wanted something less quiet, I certainly can relate to that. I was a um, tour guide at the uh, Art Institute of Chicago oh, yeah. for some time. And uh, I loved it for a while, but then I just became so thoroughly bored. <laughs> <laughs> But um, be quiet. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, that's great. And um, now, for those viewing this, and presumably most um, ha that have an interest in art to begin with may know this, but the word itself uh, obviously is used in our curriculum, but not necessarily, no pun intended, in the public. Um, public art. What exactly is this, and how? What is your role in it? Public art is, as it na its name implies, it is art, which can be plural arts, and it takes place in the public realm instead of a uh, private, intimate environment. Okay. So um, we extend that meaning to Bruce to include mm -hmm. funded by public means mm -hmm. or created by public interaction or actually contributing to a dialogue about a public issue. Oh. So contemporary public art is more than a monument or a statue in a hmm. public space. It's actually come to mean more of the dialogue of activism hmm. in the public realm as artists. I see. So it's um, a pretty broad field. <laughs> It, it sounds like it, and I didn't realize um, the broadness of that definition. So essentially, and please correct me if I'm wrong now, based on what you've stated there, um, if an artist were to create, say I were to make a painting um, and say this is pertaining to a situation in Iraq or a public concern and... Um, I got some funding from the city to do this. Would that be public art, even if I just kept it in my home studio? It would, but it wouldn't be good public art. <laughs> Probably wouldn't. I can't paint. <laughs> well, no, not so much that. But if, it doesn't, if it doesn't have a dialogue with the public audience, okay. then it really isn't successful. Mm. Yes, you might be creating a work that has a public issue at heart, okay. and you might be using public funding to do it. But um, the component of the public and its dialogue with the work of art is critical. Interesting. What do you feel is um, the responsibility of the public, um, per se, to fund or not fund public art. Uh, in other words, um, as we know, some programs uh, are being funded for the arts. Um, many areas are being cut. Um, is there, what is the importance to you as an artist, uh, presuming you believe so, to fund public art from the institutional or rather government level? I think um we judge our civilization by the works of art we create. Wow. So if we don't fund arts publicly through a collective funding resource, then we are not 
participating in an aesthetic civilization. Very, very interesting. Very, um, makes sense. Um, well, I won't digress further on that, but Carol, um, I'd love to uh, speak with you again here and um, basically conclude here now. And I think we've basically determined um, what is public art and um, a bit about Carol Christian Levy. It's a real pleasure to speak with you today. Thank you so much, Bruce. Thank you. Bye-bye.